Coming up next in Look East, Queen guitarist Brian May talks about his latest project. Now, what do you know about Brian May? He is, of course, the lead guitarist with Queen. He once played on the roof of Buckingham Palace. He's a wildlife campaigner and a scientist. And now there's even more. Yes, it turns out that he's an expert in stereoscopic photography. It's an original method of 3D. His latest project is a short film called One Night in Hell, based on a set of French stereo cards from the 1800s. It's being screened tonight at the Cambridge Film Festival. We'll be hearing from Brian in a moment, but let's just explain what the film's all about. He's best known for being part of one of the most successful bands of all time. But did you know Dr. Brian May also has a passion for stereoscopic photography, an early form of 3D imaging popular in Victorian times. The stereoscope fits over and immediately you have your 3D view. This book, which he co-authored, has now been turned into 3D animation. Move it. One Night in Hell tells the story of one skeleton's journey into stereoscopic hell. Got your ticket? It's good. Although fans of Brian May perhaps won't be familiar with this style of film, they haven't been forgotten. Kate Bradbrook, BBC Look East. <laughs> well, Brian May and his fellow producer Denis Pellerin spoke to me earlier from the Cambridge Film Festival. Brian told me how he'd first become interested in stereoscopes. When I was a kid, they used to give away in Weetabix packets little cars where you get two images, apparently flat and not very interesting, but when you put them inside a little viewer, which you would send away for, for one and sixpence, suddenly the whole thing broke into incredibly stereoscopic 3D relief, something very realistic. You felt like you could walk through a, um, a frame and actually be there and touch the animals and touch the people. It's incredible. So I discovered from that, as I grew up, that stereoscopy was born in Victorian times, about the same time as photography, and this is the kind of stereoscope you would have had if you were a Victorian. You would have bought stereo cards like this, you would put them in the viewer, and what you see is something wonderful. So 3D, as you now see it in, in 3D films, was actually born about uh, you know, 1850 for the public in Britain. Queen Victoria was a great enthusiast. Denis, as we mentioned there, 3D is, is very different now. We think about Pixar and things like that. Is it important for all of us to remember how it started like this? Most people think that uh, the 3D was invented uh, with, with Avatar and uh, what it was invented uh, 150 years ago. So it's, uh, it's um, yes, it's, it is important because, um, as Brian said, everybody in the Victorian era had a stereoscope on their, on their dining room or drawing room table and they would uh, just spend evenings and afternoons lo looking at stereos and uh, having fun and commenting them and laughing and exclaiming, wow. Well, maybe they didn't say wow at the time, but uh, they would have said, uh, oh my God, or something like that, so. If you actually can get a, a Victorian viewer, you'd be amazed by the experience. So I had to make one, because you can't buy them these days. So this is my invention. This is the, the 21st century ver version of the, the Brewster stereoscope. And you can put your iPhone in it or whatever, and you can see 3D pictures in this uh, contraption. And the film that you've made, they seem quite sinister, the, these skeletons, but can you just give us a bit of a kind of what is going on here? Well, actually, they, they, are, they are sinister when, when, you, when you first look at them, but then when you examine the, the pictures closely, you, you realise that there's a lot of uh, funny things going on uh, in the background, and, uh, and they are most, of, most, most of them are social satires or political satires, and uh, they, they are just a way of uh, showing that Paris was hell. Uh, hell is Paris, and Paris was hell at the time. And Brian, I mean, we're used to hearing um, you play, obviously. We know that you are passionate about animal welfare. We know that you are a doctor of astronomy. But how do you fit in all these things, like, like this passion as well? 
I don't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I have to ask my wife. <laughs> yeah, there's too many passions, I guess. But in, in some crazy way in my mind, they all make sense. They all come together in some way. I was able to make some music for our little uh, Diabolis film. And uh, I was able to fuse Tchaikovsky's 1812 Overture with some We Will Rock You and some guitar playing. So in, in a crazy way, it does all kind of link up. And I heard that you also used to, when you were touring with Queen, go and, and search for stereoscopic plates wherever you were in the world. Absolutely, yes. It's a hobby you can kind of pursue any place. I also always carried a stereoscopic camera with me, a little 3D realist viewer. So I have lots of pictures of Queen in the day in 3D. I'm very geeky about these things. You know, I just love it. To me, it's such a thrill to see things in, in solid relief. It's a kind of magic. It's a kind of magic, he says. <laughs> Ah, Very the best clever. joke's always at the end. <laughs> <laughs> it's just so wonderful to see that kind of passion, though, isn't it? Yeah, it he is. just yeah. loves it. And it's amazing that he couldn't find that one had to make it. Yeah, exactly.